hello everyone welcome back to the channel it is another day and it is another scholarship opportunity to study in this beautiful country of south korea and today we will be looking at an opportunity to study at ust that is university of science and technology which is located in daejeon south korea which is a very beautiful city and a city that also has a lot of technology oriented industries it is a city where a lot of students study even at seoul in suwon and other parts of south korea and then pick up a job to work in the Jones. it will be a great opportunity for you to school in an area where you might easily pick up a job after graduation that being said let's look at the benefits of this scholarship opportunity to study at university of science and technology in daejeon south korea as it says here financial support ust enrolled students are provided with financial support to ensure their studies and research environment so for doctoral courses you would find here 1,800,000 korean won and then for master's courses it says 1,350,000 korean won and then if you look down here again it says financial support is the minimum amount and is based on monthly payment and then if you go down there are other opportunities for students to still get some money that will help them with their studies you have some awards so there are lots of awards opportunities here that you can take advantage of while studying at this university institute in daejeon south korea this scholarship is for you to study in fall 2024 which means you will begin your studies in september 2024 let's look at the different timelines but before we do that information admission sessions these are very important despite the fact that this one has already passed but for every university in south korea they usually have an admission session it is a session where you can even attend online and then get to know the university institutions and know the professors you might have the opportunity to present yourself and then present your profile you never know it might catch the attention of a professor in any of the universities that might be having an information session i posted an information on education fairs that are currently ongoing in south korea on my facebook i don't know if any of you were able to see it that is also a great opportunity for you to get to know the university and know the opportunities that are offered there and also get to know some professors in the different universities that are involved in the education trade fair you might want to follow me on facebook and instagram because i do have a lot of scholarship opportunities that i post on facebook and instagram that i do not even have that time because of my busy schedule to make videos for those scholarship opportunities for the admission schedule timeline you can see here it says application submission it has already started since the 17th of april and will end on the 8th of may at 5 pm that is korean standard time do not follow your local time in your home country and then sending supplementary documents that is in case they begin reviewing document and you are missing out on any document you will have until 20th to the 22nd of may to make sure that they receive the extra document or supplementary document document review will then begin from the 28th of may right up to the 30th of may announcement of successful candidates who would go through who would succeed in the document review will be done on the 5th of june and then interview will take place from the 11th of june right up to the 17th of june and then from the 1st of july they will start rolling out the announcement of final students who've been admitted into university of science and technology in daejeon south korea ust now for the scholarship and the majors that are available it is important to know that there are different categories so you must make sure you are applying to the correct category because it says here eligibility by admission category so the first one is foreign nationals you have two there is the master and integrated master and phd program and then there is just the phd if you are applying for this program and you know you've not yet graduated make sure you graduate by the 31st of august 2024 if you graduate on the 1st of september know that your application will be rejected you must make sure you are graduating by the 31st of august and the graduation date should be on your documents it is the same thing for phd 
it's very important and it is also the same thing for every other category that is available foreign nationals this is for those who are in any part of the world you're not supposed to hold a south korean citizenship when applying for the foreign national scholarship and then the second category is the specialized masters and this is the london protocol engineering master of project administration if you are able to get a recommendation from the lpem the london protocol then you can apply for this specialized masters this one is mainly for masters degree applicants it is also very important to take into account the language proficiency for UST, they do not accept English proficiency from your past university, which means if you studied, you did your bachelor's degree in a university that uses English as a medium of instruction, the English proficiency from that university is not going to serve you any good for this scholarship opportunity. You must either have the TOEFL, the IELTS, or any of the recognized English proficiency. We will talk about that later on. And then there is the COICA scholarship program koika koika is the south korean government agency that is in many different parts of the world but for this koika scholarship it is mainly for students from uzbekistan so if you are from uzbekistan you must make sure you get recommended by the koika office that is located in your country uzbekistan and also make sure you graduate by the 31st of august for both masters and phd so koika scholarship here is for both master and PhD students from Uzbekistan. And then the third category is the ROCA scholarship. The ROCA, this is it. These are the countries that are under ROCA, beginning from Bangladesh, Cambodia, right down to Thailand and Vietnam. So if your country is on this list, you can apply for the ROCA scholarship. ROCA simply means Regional Cooperative Agreement, that is Intergovernmental Agreement. Countries that are listed here, their governments decided to talk about education, give the opportunity for students from these countries to go and study in South Korea. So it is mainly an agreement between these countries that are listed here and the South Korean government to enable students from these countries to go and study in South Korea. India is even there. I remember I have a lot of Indians in this channel and I also have a lot of Pakistanis in the channel and also from other parts of the world. So take an advantage and apply for the ROCA. They provide it at both the masters and PhD. Take note of the graduation date. It's very important. You must make sure you graduate by August 31st. And there is even an additional scholarship benefit here that you can go ahead and read. I usually tell people that the one of the reasons as to why people fail in their scholarship application is because they do not take the time to read the guidelines and understand it well. I'll place a video down in the description as to why many students fail in their scholarship application. You can go ahead and read it. Despite the fact that that video is for GKS, that's the Global Korea Scholarship, it does apply to every other scholarship criteria in South Korea because there are always rules to follow. And then the final category is for overseas Korean. I don't think this will be of interest to us, so we are not going to spend time on it. And then for degree programs, it is important to make sure you follow foreign nationals. It is important to know that UST has many schools that are scattered all over South Korea. So for example, there is the COPRI, the Korea Polar Research Institute. It is is located in another corner of South Korea. Criso is in located in another corner of South Korea. This one is in Busan because it has to do with ocean engineering. For example, Polar Science has PhD. It offers PhD. It offers integrated PhD and master's, which means you can begin with your master's degree and then transition to a PhD. They also offer it at the master's degree. But ship and ocean engineering is offered only at the PhD. They don't have it at the integrated or master's level. So when applying for ship and ocean engineering, make sure you are applying just to do a PhD. Simply put, where you see an O, it means it is available for PhD. Where you see an O, it is available for both integrated master and PhD. And where you see an O, it is available for master's degree. Where you see an X, it's not available. So take into account that wherever you see O, it is available. Wherever you see X, it's not available. These are the scores that are available for international students. So go ahead and read them carefully, 
understand them you have to equally go to the website on this website you would find detailed information about the different schools that are available so go ahead and then click on them and then try to read more it's very important that you go through this website and then try to read open it understand it it's very very important there is a possibility for you to get in contact even with the different professors in the different schools that are available for the specialized masters this is it it's the korea institute of ocean science and technology remember we talked about specialized masters and then there is the koika it is for korea research institute of chemical engineering so you can only apply to do one of chemical engineering or advanced material and then for those who are applying for rca they can apply to the korea atomic energy research institute or korea institute of radiological and medical science take note of the o and the axis it's very important the next one is for overseas korean we don't have anything to do with this for list of documents that are required you would have to provide a proposal of study your bachelor's degree certificate or expected graduation in case you are still schooling and will graduate soon and then you'd have to provide your bachelor's transcript for those who are applying for phd they are graduation certificate or expected graduation certificate transcript and then master's thesis for those applying for phd if you have a thesis for your bachelor's degree you can equally provide it it's good language proficiency it is very important on page 26 there is detailed information about language proficiency there certificate of employment if you have it it's good then if you have other documents to prove your excellence it's your choice you can provide at least one or a maximum of two letters of recommendation it is important know that you must provide at least one letter of recommendation or if you have two go ahead and provide but you cannot provide three and it must be done online which means when applying online you would have to provide the email address of the person who is going to recommend you and they must make sure they submit the letter of recommendation by the deadline it can also be done through email or by postal service as it has been indicated here that is the second option and it must be posted to this address that has been indicated here you're not supposed to see it it's very important and this is the email and the letters of recommendation and then you must make sure you use the recommendation letter form here it's very important that you provide this form to your recommender and these are the most accepted people who can recommend you your academic advisor or your direct supervisor at your current or former workplace which means they give you the opportunity to use a recommender from your workplace but the most important thing the person supervising you at your current university or the university where you graduated will be more valid for a recommender it is very important that you go ahead and read the different methods of sending recommendation the different schools have their different methods of sending letters of recommendation it's very important that you read it and then for english proficiency it is very important to note that they will only accept TOEFL, new tabs IELTS. If you have topic, you can go ahead and provide topic, at least level 4 topic. And then there is a process for you to submit the documents here. The only countries that are exempted from English proficiency are the countries that have been listed here. Any other student will have to submit one of the English proficiency that have been mentioned here. And then read this information about the English proficiency. It's very important. That being said, I'm going to end the video here because this video has been very long. I'll see you in the next one. Make sure that you subscribe. Make sure you look down in the description section of this video because there are many other scholarship opportunities that are available in South Korea right now that you can take advantage and apply to. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.